Would you please pray with me? O oh God of grace, God of mercy, speak to us now through your word. Stir our spirits, touch our hearts, and deepen our understanding through the words that you place on each of our hearts. And O oh dear God, may the words that I have to offer here this morning please you and honor you and glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Five years ago, this month, we dropped off our oldest child, Martin, at college for his freshman year at a school that was 699.6 miles away or by car 11 hours and three minutes from home. But who's measuring, right? <laughs> As you might guess, I was a mess. You can ask my spouse Shane, who's sitting toward the back of the sanctuary today. I'm pretty sure that I sobbed for the first two hours straight and then was weepy for the remainder of that long car ride home back here to Columbus without Marty. During those first couple of weeks of his college career, Marty and I checked in with each other fairly regularly as he was adjusting to campus life and buying his textbooks and dropping and adding classes. I'll never forget a phone conversation that we had one of those early days of his freshman year as he was walking back to his dorm room after attending the student activities fair. He was so excited when he told me, he said, Mom, Mom, guess what? I signed up for the hiking club, a co-ed soccer team, a men's soccer team, broom ball, the water polo club, he had never played water polo before, an environmental protection student group, and guess what else? I was also elected to be the Instagram activities coordinator of my dorm. <laughs> In my typical way, I, I said something probably like, oh, wow, Marty, that's, that's wonderful. I'm so happy that you're finding a number of different ways to plug in and get involved and meet new people, make some new friends. But that is a lot of activities. And so you know you're going to have to make sure that you have plenty of time to study and to rest too. And so you might just have to pare down and prioritize that long list of activities. And so in other words, Marty, it will be important for you to just focus on those activities that are life-giving for you. I could almost hear his eyes roll in that moment. <laughs> and he said, now don't you worry, Mom. I've got this. I'll figure it out just fine. And he most certainly did. What was I thinking? Telling my then 18-year-old to choose what was life-giving. What was I thinking? My words of advice to Marty that day certainly reflected where I was on my own life's journey at that time. And even still, today, which is often overcommitted and overscheduled and stretched in many different directions. Any of you can relate to that? <laughs> and though over time I have become more and more intentional about choosing that which feeds me and letting go of that which depletes me. This tender memory about Marty from a few years back came to
to mind this past week as I was reflecting on our gospel reading for today. You may recall that last Sunday, we made that huge leap from the direct and straightforward style of Mark's storytelling to the now deep and rather elusive style of the gospel writer of John. Now, as I may have mentioned last week, I often need to sit with John for a time before the meaning of the text becomes clearer for me. And so, during these past several days, I allowed myself to enter into our gospel reading, so to speak. And when I did that, it was almost as though I was able to feel the panic and the worry and the high levels of anxiety among those crowds of people who got into their boats at Capernaum to literally follow Jesus by chasing him and tracking him down. The sense of restlessness among the crowd was palpable. There was this seeking and this searching and a questioning about them that arose out of that deep place of a deep need to understand what had previously happened. You may remember that in the previous verses of the same chapter, chapter 6, Jesus had fed the 5,000 with just five loaves and two fish. And then, if one miracle wasn't enough, Jesus had performed a second miracle that same day when he walked on water. And so, it's really no wonder that the crowd indeed wondered about this one who was a wonder. First, they asked Jesus, Rabbi, Rabbi, when did you come here? And then they inquired, what must we do to perform the works of God? And soon other questions followed when they asked, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe in you? And what work are you performing? And so how does Jesus, our rabbi, and our teacher respond to the questions of the crowd? Not with direct answers, of course, but in metaphor. And the metaphor in this story is bread. Jesus says, for the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And then he declared, he said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus' response to his followers then invites us, all of us, as his followers today to reflect on what it is in our lives that feeds us, that truly feeds us. What gives you life? What is the source and the sustenance of your life? What subtracts from your life too? What connects you to the lives of one another, what prevents you from living fully? How do you cultivate life within the world around you? And what is life-giving to you and through you? In our gospel reading for this morning, Jesus calls us and challenges us and commands us to deeply examine the source of life that we lead now and the source of life that we seek. 
in your day-to-day -day lives, in the choices that you make, in the commitments that you keep, and in all that you do, in the ways that you serve, and in the ways that you rest, in your saying yes and in your saying no, may you find that which is life-giving and encounter the one who gives us life. I'd like to close this morning with a short poem written by David White, an Irish poet. White is spelled W-H-Y-T-E. And this poem is called Enough. Enough. These few words are enough. If not these words, this breath. If not this breath, this sitting here, this opening to the life we have refused again and again until now, until now. Thanks be to God. Amen.